Would you please welcome Barat Ali Batur. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's great to have you here in the studio, Barat. Tell me a bit about that experience of, of getting up on the main stage at TEDx. What was that like for you? Uh, thank you for uh, uh, inviting me here first. It was, uh, I was really excited. It was a big thing, like uh, uh, only 11 months in Australia, like um, a lot of things happening here and uh, I got a chance to express my views and like to tell my stories to a very big audience. So it was a big thing. I was definitely, I was nervous a little bit, but it was good. Nervousness is, is a good thing though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, I know you touched on it in your talk, but could you give me a sense of, and as you said, you've only been here for 11 months, about what has happened for you in that 11 months for you to reach this point? Well, since I got to Australia, like, uh, I had a, an amazing start in Australia, like uh, lots of things had been happening, like I had many shows uh, in different cities, like and I won two Walkleys only in five months, and like uh, now I have the TED, and I have more exhibitions coming up. So yeah, like Australia is a land of opportunities, and like it had given me a lot of chance, and I, I'm really grateful for that. Mm. But you also say that not every asylum seeker is as lucky as me. You said that in your talk. That's important to remember for you? Yeah, I did, because uh, <clears throat> what happened with me, like a lot of friends uh, in Indonesia, they tried to help me with my situation and with my case to expedite it, and I got resettled very quickly within seven, eight months from Indonesia into Australia. Though, like, the other asylum seekers, they end up, like, four years, five years, sometimes ten years, and without any certain fate. Like, they don't know what's going to happen to them next. Every day is the same day for them. Like, they sleep, they eat, and they and they spend the day and they're waiting for the phone call or waiting for their, an answer from uh, UNHCR or like any embassy there. Mm. Um, Barat Ali Batur, we do have a question from uh, one of our audience and Lucy Carter uh, is with the microphone. Thanks, Lucy. No worries. And this is, I think, a question that a lot of people in this room will be very interested in. Lee. Hi. Firstly, thank you for your presentation. I'd just like to know um, what do you see as the most effective way to change the incorrect public perception on asylum seekers in Australia? Well, the misperception which has been spread it is by the uh, like media and the politicians. So they are the ones who can change it. Uh, mm. as, as an individual, as an individual like. Uh, like me or anyone else like who has those potential like everyone should play their own role so it will be changed eventually like it will take time but it's not impossible i suppose i'm kind of curious about the the photographs that you premiered today were of that journey but what interests you visually today now that you're here what are you taking photographs of what intri what, what intrigues you in here, yeah, uh, at TEDx today. Oh no, in Australia at the moment. In Australia, I am currently working on a project about the uh, Hazaras uh, from Pakistan and Afghanistan in Melbourne, which will be exhibited during Refugee Week uh, in June, and that uh, exhibition will travel around uh, Victoria. So it is basically like the idea. Like when I came first here, as I said earlier, like uh, Hazaras has the fourth largest population in Australia in the world. So I wanted to see like. First, uh, the Hazaras started coming to uh, uh, Australia during the Taliban occupation in 1999. And I was wondering like, what they have done in this last 13, 14 years, and how did they integrate? Like, uh, how are they doing? So I wanted to do a little bit more uh, research about them and to show like how they are doing. So there's the, the stories about that. I'm looking forward to seeing those images. Um, Barat Ali Batur, we are asking everybody in the studio today what is their greatest lesson worth sharing. So for you, what is, what is the one lesson that you would love to share with us today? Lesson from life. That could be it, yeah. <laughs> well, there is always like... Uh, Behind every failure, there is a success. So I learned during, like, uh, for my past experience, like, since the failure started or the st or the the worst time started in my life, then after that, like, it went up only. It didn't go down. So, so keep pushing on, absolutely. Barat Ali Batur, ladies and gentlemen.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.